Here's our crosstab report. And we've used formulas to convert the crosstab into a proper data set. And if we add a new quiz to our table, I want the proper data set to instantly update. Add a new record to the bottom, and bam, the formula solution updates. Now our goal is to go from this cross tab into a proper data set. And we're going to see how to do it with dynamic array formulas. But the much easier way is to use the unpivot feature in Power Query. We also could have used old school formulas that require copying down. Something like index with roundup and rows, which yield the pattern 111, 222, and so on. Here we use index. Mod and rows, that gives us the pattern 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then we simply do a two-way lookup. But let's go over and see how to do it with dynamic arrays. Now the first column we're going to create from this crosstab report is we want to take the columns quiz 1, 2, and 3 and put them into a single column. Now before we do that, we want to bump into a problem. And let's just see what happens if I highlight all of these three columns of quiz values, which is what we're going to do inside of two columns. Let's hit Enter. If I were to add a new column with a new quiz, what happens? It doesn't update. Control Z, Z. And the reason why is because we hard coded in, hey, get everything from quiz 1 to quiz 3. Now one of the big advantages of using an Excel table object is that it's an object. And let's delete all of those columns. That's always going to be the inside of the table, and it's dynamic. When we add new columns or new rows, that table object always updates. So Enter. Now if I add a new quiz, of course, that is a table object, so it knows and incorporates the new data. Control Z, Z. But guess what? We don't want the first column. That's where the amazing function drop comes in, F2. We can use drop, and drop takes columns either from the left or right, or rows from the top or bottom. Now, comma, if we wanted to take rows from the top, if we put a positive 1 or positive 2, that would remove one or two rows from the top. Negative numbers removes rows from the bottom. Comma, for columns, minus number takes columns from the right. But for us, we want to only remove one column from the left. So that's what we put, close parentheses, and Enter. And this is beautiful. When I drag this over here, the table object and drop totally update, Control-Z-Z. Now in the top cell, F2. Now we use two call. That'll take that rectangular range with three columns and deliver it as a single column. And it's dynamic. Control Z Z. Now we have 9, 10, 4. That means right here, 9, 10, 4, I need to repeat Chantel three times. Then I need to take from the column headers quiz 1, 2, 3, quiz 1, 2, 3. Now this is a lookup situation. And actually, I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. The first way is the more traditional way where we're going to use index, a lookup function. And as it spills down, it's going to need to look up 111 and then somehow switch to 222. Now in our formula, we're going to have a number of formula elements that we have to use more than once. So to be efficient, we're going to use the let function and define variables so we don't have to calculate those repeated elements multiple times. Alt Enter, we're going to name the first variable quiz names. That'll just be the array of names of quizzes. So that's the name of the variable, comma. Here's the formula input for that variable. And we're going to have to use drop again on the field names, comma, comma. We're removing the left column, so one. That's a dynamic list of quiz names in essence. Comma, we need student names. And for this one, we don't have to use drop, because when we use a table column reference like this, it's automatically dynamic. Comma, Alt, Enter. 
we're going to need to count each one of those items. So this one will be quiz count. And the quiz names are across columns. So we'll use columns to count quiz names. Comma. And as I'm building the formula elements, I want to check using the calculation part. So I'm going to type QC temporarily. That is what let is going to deliver. Close parentheses, Control Enter. So that's correct. Quiz count of three. Student count. And there are down the rows. So we'll use rows to count student names. And we'll see what that is delivering, a 5. That is correct, F2. So with those four variables, Alt-Enter, we can build the final part, which is our index formula. Now let's build the sequence of numbers first and let it spill into the worksheet to check and see if we get the pattern 111, 222. Two, two. This is the final formula, so we're not going to define a name. We're just going to use sequence. And how many rows do we need? Quiz count times student count. Close parentheses. Close on let. And let's see if it delivers 1 to 15. Yes, it does. Now, the way we're going to get 111, 222 is if we divide all of these numbers by the count of quizzes, we'll get some partial numbers up to 1, some partial numbers up to 2, and then we'll round up to the integer. So right at the end, divide by quiz count. Control Enter. Now we can use round up to get our ones, our twos, and so on. Round up, and we need to comma, tell it number of digits zero. That rounds to the ones position. Close parentheses, and when I enter, that's the row number lookup that index can use, F2. Now we say index of the student names, that's in array, comma, and row number, round up and sequence, delivers all the correct row numbers. Close parentheses. And when I enter, that is absolutely beautiful. Chantel, three times. Devante, three times. Later, when we add a new quiz, it will be listed four times. Now, for the quiz column, we could take the same approach using index. But instead of round up, we would use the mod function. But instead of doing it that way, let's see a slightly different method that will use one of the new functions, expand. Now, the formula we're going to create here starts out exactly like this formula and has the same two initial inputs. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to create it off to the side so we can see how it spills. Quiz names, student names, Alt, Enter. And we're going to use a great new function called expand. Now I can take an array of items and expand, in our case, downward. So what do we want? Quiz names. And I want to expand it down to a total of five rows. So we'll use rows and count student names. That will give a count of five. But when we enter this, it's going to give us something not quite what we want. But it will expand. Control Enter. And here we want to simply fill down. I want all quiz 1s, quiz 2s, quiz 3s. And the way we're going to do that is in front of expand, we say if na. And so expand is in value, comma, value if na, quiz names. Now when I close parentheses, it's going to fill down. Now we can use the to call function. And quiz 1, 2, 3 will be listed. Then quiz 1, 2, 3 will be listed next which is exactly what we need, F2. To call. And the default is to take each row and then list it in a column, which is exactly what we want here. Close parentheses. And there we have our third column. Now, of course, this is a spilled array, so I only need to move the top cell. And there it is. We used to call and drop to grab the intersecting values, let drop index, round, sequence, and a bunch of other functions to get our student names. And then drop and the new expand with an if and a and two columns. All right, now we're going to test this. If I add a new column, does it update? How about if I add a new row? And this is you, and you got a perfect score every time of 10. And sure enough, Chantel is listed four times with the correct scores. And you also are listed now at the bottom, sorted correctly. 
with your perfect four tens. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.